The main topic for today is going to be sigma notation. However, we're going to start talking about factorials because that's going to play into it and we need a little bit of background. So factorial is typically expressed by an exclamation point mathematically. So if I say n factorial right here, that means whatever that number is multiplied by the integers one less than that number all the way down to the number one. So for example, four factorial is four times three times two times one. Six factorial over three factorial, well that's six, five, four, three, two, one, all multiplied together. Over three factorial, which is three, two, one, those all reduce, so I end up with 120. Now, if I want to simplify n minus 4 factorial over n factorial, let's think about what that's going to be. It's going to be the number given to start with. Then I take 1 away from that number. So 1 less than n minus 4 is n minus 5, n minus 6, and all the way down until we get to 3, 2, 1, dot, 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 if you will. n factorial is going to be n, 1 less than that, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, and you'll see n minus 5, we start creating overlap now, dot, 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 3 times 2 times 1. So basically, 3, the 2, the 1, everything in between goes, and it keeps going till we get to n minus 4, leaving me with the following. 1 on top, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and n minus 3 in the denominator. And that's that simplification. So, we move on to summation notation from here, or sigma notation. Sigma is this Greek letter, and it means the sum of. All right, a typical sigma notation problem will be in this form. And this says, basically, find the sum of the series generated by the equation given by some a sub n, where n begins with the number 1 in this case, and increments by integers until I get to a total of n. So let's take a look at a practical application of that and see how that's solved. So we're going to evaluate the series of 2 to the n plus 1 as n goes from 4 to 7. So what that means is I start with an n value of 4 and plug it into the n in the explicit formula. So that's going to get me 2 to the 4th plus 1. And then I increment that n value by 1. So I have 2 to the 5th plus 1. 2 to the 6 plus 1, and finally I get to 2 to the 7th plus 1. And then I want to take and add all those values up. So this goes to 16 plus 1 plus 32 plus 1 plus 64 plus 1, plus 128, plus 1. And I just grind all that out on my calculator, and I end up with the sum of 244. Now, in this next case, we're to start at 1 and go to infinity. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a geometric series 
with a ratio less than 1, so I can get a sum. And if it's not, and if it's arithmetic or if it's geometric with a ratio greater than 1, my answer is going to be there is no sum. So I start by plugging in the number 1. I get 2 times a third. Then the next term would be 2 times 1 ninth. The next number would be 2 times 1 27th. And we can start to see that as I go through, I have a ratio in this case of one third from term to term, which means this is an infinite geometric, and my ratio is less than one. So in this case, I need my infinite geometric series, which says take a1, put it over 1 minus r, and get your sum. So my first term is 2 thirds over 1 minus my ratio, which is 1 third, thus giving me 2 thirds over 2 thirds, or 1. And that's the sum of that series. Now, what we want to do is rather than having a sigma notation and expanding it, we're going to take and write this sum using sigma notation. So I look at 3, 6, 9, 12, and I need an a sub n, or an explicit formula, to describe this sequence of numbers. Now I notice I have a common difference of 3 in this case, so this is going to be arithmetic. And the arithmetic says a1 plus d times n minus 1 will give me that explicit formula. And I'm solving for a sub n, so I take 3 plus my common difference, which again is 3, times n minus 1, and this will get me a formula. I can leave it like this, or I can simplify it. This is going to be 3 plus 3n minus 3, or 3n is going to be my a sub n formula. And notice, when I plug n equals 1, in I get 3, n equals 2 in I get 6, n equals 3 in 9, and n equals 4 in I get 12. So I can say the sum as n goes from 1 to 4 of my a sub n formula will describe the above sum. Some of these will start getting harder now. Let's take a look at the following. I'm going from 16 to 7, from 7 to negative 2, et cetera, et cetera, until I get to negative 587. So I don't know how many terms are in this series. So what I commonly like to do, not always, but I commonly like to start at n equals 1 and move to some number, which I don't know. I also don't know my a sub n equation, but I notice in this case that these also have a common difference of negative 9. So I can find my explicit formula, and I'll do that now by taking a sub n is equal to 16, plus your common difference, which is negative 9, times n minus 1. So my equation is 16 minus 9n plus 9, or 25 minus 9n, and I'm going to put that into my a sub n spot in sigma notation. And now I have to find out how many terms there are in this sequence. Well, I have my explicit formula, a sub n, and if I want to know the number of terms, then I better put the nth term, or negative 587, into the a sub n spot, and that will give me the subscript of this number. I'll go through and subtract 25 from negative 587, and that's going to get me negative 612. It's equal to negative 9n. Divide that by 9, and I get 68 as my value of n. So I can put 68 up here, 
and I will have written that sequence in sigma notation. Again, I said earlier that I prefer to start by taking my sigma notations and beginning them with 1. So I would say I'd like to get that value of 1 by plugging in 1 value of 1 fourth by plugging in 2, value of 1 ninth by plugging in 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I need to write an a sub n equation to develop this 1 one hundredth term. And this is pretty easy to see because I see all these base numbers appear to be perfect squares. So if I go 1 over n squared, as n goes from 1 to, well, 100 is just 10 squared, that should get that problem done. We keep moving. I notice in this case my numerator is the same. So when I write my nth term or my explicit formula, I'm going to have a 3 on the top. Now I look at the denominator and I'm going from 1 to 3 to 5 and it appears that I'm incrementing by a common difference of 2. So I need n equals 1 to be able to plug that in, get a 1 out, n equals 2 to get a 3 out, n equals 3 to get a 5 out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then find out how many terms I have to get 67. I will assume this is going to be an arithmetic sequence. So I take my first term plus my common difference of 2 times n minus 1 will equal my explicit formula, and remember this explicit formula is in the denominator, so I get 2n minus 1 is equal to the explicit formula. I'll put this down here, and just check, if I plug a 1 in, do I get a 1 out, a 2 in, I get a 3 out, a 3 in, I get a 5 out, etc., etc., and I need to find out how many terms there are in order to get a 67 out for my nth term. Well, if I solve that and divide 68 by 2, I end up with 34. So if I plug 34 in, am I going to get 67 out? And I sure do. So n's going to go from 1 to 34. And there's my sigma notation for that series. So in this next one, you can see we have four terms. And as I also said, I usually like starting at 1. But the question is going to be, does it make sense to start at 1? Here is n. And my nth value here gets out of 2. If I plug in a 2, I should get out a 5. If I plug in a 3, I should get out a 10. And if I plug in a 4, I should get out a 17. Likewise, on top, if I plug in a 1, I need to get a 2 multiplied by a 3 out. If I plug in a 2, I need a 3 multiplied by a 4 out. A 3 multiplied by a 4 and a 5 out. This problem is as much as finding patterns than anything else. If you take a look at the n values on each of these, you'll notice in the numerator that the starting number is one more than the n value. So I can put one more than the n value up top, and then my next number is one more than that. So that's n plus 1 times n plus 2. Now in my denominator, Again, you're going to need to start noticing some powers. This is not arithmetic, and it's not geometric, because nothing's common. I have a difference of 3 here, and a multiple of, you know, whatever 2 multiplies to get me 5, so 2 times 2.5. 
5 times 2.5 is not 10, so this is neither arithmetic or geometric. I would also start looking for powers or squares or cubes or any of those other type of special numbers. Now I notice if I look at squares in this case, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. And I notice that each of these numbers is one more than that. So this is n squared plus 1. And I only have four terms, so I start at 1, and I move to 4. Again, they're not always going to work out nice in arithmetic and geometric. We're going to have to start looking for some other patterns. So in this example, we're going to see another interesting pattern. In the top, what you'll notice is I have powers of 4. 4 to the first, 4 to the second, 4 to the third is 64, and 4 to the fourth is 256. So when I write my sigma notation, my numerator can reflect powers of 4. But what you'll find curious about this series is it alternates between negative and positive and negative and positive. So when I have n equals 1, I need to get out a 4 on top, which I would, a 16 when I plug in a 2, which I do, a 64, and a 256. All those in terms of positives would work out. But I need a negative 4 to start with. So will it work if I make powers of negative 4? Negative 4 to the first is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 4 cubed is negative 64. So it appears this will work. So I'm going to make powers of negative 4. Now the interesting thing is the bottom. I increment by 1, then 3, then actually 18 in this case. So that doesn't look like it's helping me. But if I look at multiples of how I get from 1 to the next to the next, I multiply by 2 here. I multiply by 3 to get to here. And I multiply by 4 to get to here. And you'll notice 2, 3, and 4 also match my n value. So what happens when I multiply by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., etc., in sequential order? That's like a factorial. This bottom is a factorial pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiply all those together. I would get 1, 2, 6, 24. And the next one in line... I'd have to multiply by 5, 120. This right here is a typical n factorial pattern. So the bottom in this case is n factorial as n goes from 1 to 4. So here are some sample problems. Give those a crack and we'll see you tomorrow.